Hello everyone, can anyone please uh, confirm the audio screen share before we get started? Everybody, please type in um, something in the chat. So we want to make sure that we are all up and running. So we are going to wait uh, one, two, three minutes before we get started. Great, excellent. Okay, good. Okay, folks. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to Big Bang Data Science Solutions, the NLP program. This is the ninth week of, out of the 10 week um, that we uh, agreed upon on this free program. Uh, in session number one, we talked about an introduction to data science and analytics. Then in session number two, we talked about the Python and Python Jupyter Notebook. In session number three, we talked about the introduction to natural language processing part one. Then in session number, uh, or week number four, we talked about the introduction to NLP part number two. <coughs> in uh, week number five or session number five, we talked about the feature extraction methods. Then we moved to uh, developing a text classifier in, six, in week number six. Uh, week number seven, num number seven, we did collecting text data with web scrapping or scraping and API. Then in week number eight, we did topic modeling. We are going to skip uh, building a chatbots and text generation. We are going to move them to following weeks. But this week, we are going to do sentiment analysis. And Ed Bujak, uh, Professor Ed Bujak, will be uh, driving. So, um, Ed Bujak, if you are ready, can you please share your screen? And once you do, I'm going to mute myself, and you should be driving all the way to the end. Okay, folks, can you see my screen? It looks like Google Drive. And can you hear me? Yeah, I think, yeah, I just shared your screen, and they should be able to see you. Okay, folks. Um, now, um, I want to put a, a for this uh, Google Drive share, I'll put a link. I'm sorry, I'll put a link in uh, the GoToMeeting, but can you also put it in YouTube yes, to provide yeah. them the source code for this so that yes. they can download? Yeah, I already shared those um, on the um, Canvas, but yes, go ahead. Go ahead and do that, then I will be more than happy to share it on the YouTube. Um, darn. I'm looking for the uh, the the go to meeting thing. Here it is. I got it. The chat's coming up. I'm sorry. It'll be a bit uh, a URL shortened. It'll be a bit link, folks. Um, and so that's read only permissions for the uh, Google Drive I just submitted in chat. Uh, I can also uh, put it in uh, text edit. I'll make it bigger for you guys. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, sorry about that. So if you can type that in if you like to, or it will get to you, that's pretty good. So in the bottom left, there will be a, a, a bit.ly link. Um, it's case sensitive, so it's 3QSXYDM. And while you're downloading that, I'll explain what we're going to attempt to do. So this is sentiment analysis. And, uh, you know, sentiment is a human thing. Uh, it's very hard to pinpoint human sentiment sometimes because sometimes we appear to be sarcastic and contradictory and things like that. So that's really advanced. Uh, so we're going to just start with easy sentiment analysis. Uh, we won't worry about contradictions and, you know, double negatives the way most languages are. Okay. Uh, and us as humans, we're really easy. You know, after you're about five years old, you figure out what people are saying, you know, what they really mean, what their real intent is. Unfortunately, we don't have that privilege when we look at text, meaning the language. Or uh, if we're a little bit more fortunate, uh, we'll have like a score. 
So we're going to look at two things today. Um, one will be uh, if we have if this one, if we actually have a number like the food ratings, uh, and we will look at one, uh, and you'll rate it from zero to five. And some people call it a Ligert scale and all that. And typically you have surveys and, you know, they're usually odd number of answers and you rate it from zero to five or whatever. Great. Um, that's the easy one. Uh, cause you actually got a number. Uh, it's, there's no real interpretation of any language going on there. So that's when you use, uh, you, you calculate distances by just numbers. Now, if you don't have an actual score of how you feel about whatever, the food, the product, the marketing campaign, whatever, you have to work from text. And that becomes uh, more open-ended. So you got to have different mechanisms to calculate distances. And they're text based so big breakdown is do i have a number score to derive sentiment or do i have a uh, a language thing like you have free form english that you responded to how you feel about the product the food that's a little harder so we have to employ other things when we involve text so you've seen a lot of the stuff that you have to do beforehand to get the words, in our case, words, out of the free response that the person answered. And once you get the words, you have to sort of vectorize it. So the most popular one is, is GLOVE. Uh, I actually forgot what it stands for, but we'll be looking at that in this, in this file. And it will be analyzing um sentiment from like the word point of view like is happy the same as cheer no they're they're different parts of speech so glove is pretty good at detecting that you know happy is very close to cheerful because they're adjectives so you've heard all these things before, like uh, POS, uh, parts of speech. You shouldn't be comparing parts of speeches that are different. You should get adjectives, should compare with adjectives, nouns should compare with nouns, and verbs should compare with verbs. So believe it or not, happy is not close to cheer. Because cheer is a noun. Happy is an adjective, okay? So happy is, is real close to cheerful, and we'll see that. So um, let's get working on some of this stuff, and hopefully you're downloading this. Uh, there is one file, and if you're smart, try to segregate your data into a separate directory, your assets in a separate directory. But... There's only one file for data. There's only one data file we have, and we'll talk about it when we get there. It's a classic uh, restaurant reviews uh, uh, data set uh, downloaded from Kaggle or Kaggle. Uh, it's a rather large one. So, uh, you know, it, it's 208, 287 megabytes, but it's a lot of records. So, uh, when you're dealing with sentiment, you know, having three responses is not good. You want a lot. You want a lot of records, a lot of data to derive real sentiment because you know how it is. If you have one person who hates the restaurant and they're writing three reviews, the restaurant's going to look really bad or the food's going to look really bad. Or, or So you want a lot of reviews so it smooths out the uh, the really bad reviews. Uh, the, the reviews that are not representative of what it is. So if it is a bad restaurant, everyone will say it's bad. But there will be one or two that says it's great. You want to get rid of them by getting a large sample set. Okay? And vice versa. If the restaurant is really, really good, you're always going to have someone who's, who's bummed out with something. But it'll be smoothed out by the greater majority who said it's a great place. Okay? So you want large data sets when you deal with 
text, okay? Not just three responses or things like that. Oh, especially when you're driving sentiment, okay? So hopefully you downloaded it. Um, um, I'm running my stuff local. Uh, so I'm going to go to my uh, 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 here. I'll just close everything out. And so this is a, uh, you should know this by now, I guess. Uh, unfortunately, I'll stick it in this directory. I don't. So I'm going to look at my uh, natural mind, um, my natural language processing one. And I'm going to think I'm going to do the, uh, the time consuming one, believe it or not, is the, is the restaurant reviews, where you actually rate a, a restaurant like zero, one, two, three, four, five. Or rate the you know you can rate a lot of pieces of the restaurant you know all the way from the restrooms all the way to the service all the way to the bar all the way to the greeting all the way to everything including the food you know breakdown of the food that kind of stuff appetizers were horrible but so the word but is really a tricky one but the rest of the meal was great that kind of stuff that's real important how we deal with like uh, like words especially like but. Because it's 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 two parts of a sentence. One is usually one way, and the other one is the opposite way. Because that's what but usually means. So we we have to have a come we have to come up with a great, great way to separate that. And it's really easy. It's great. So I'm gonna um, fire up um, um, the sentiment one NLP dot sentiment. Unfortunately, you're looking at a lot of stuff here. So uh, these are the two that we are going to look at today. So I'm gonna first look at the one where it's actually numerical distances, not linguistic based stuff. So uh, sentiment, uh, nlp.sentiment.ipynb. Uh, so it's nlp.sentiment Jupyter Notebook. So hopefully you got it all downloaded. The real, uh, all the files, all, the four source files, the four Jupyter notebook files are, are uh, small in sense of download, but the reviews is uh, reviews.csv file is is uh, 290 ish megabytes. So uh, that might take some time. Okay, but the recording is available and. Uh, the share will be available for a long, 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 long time. So um, remember, NLP sentiment. One is uh, numerical sort of base. They're all numerical behind the scenes. But if I have a rating that's an actually ordinal data, like zero, one, two, three, four, meaning zero is bad and you know five is good. So there's an order. You know, three is better than two. Is better than one. That kind of stuff. That's easy, but still you got to come up with some ways to analyze it. It's not just a number, okay? So uh, let's just proceed. So sentiment is, um, uh, it's kind of in the eyes of the beholder. So you got to uh, hope that over many people, it actually, actually represents the truth. Um, so there we go. And so, uh, you know, who uses sentiment analysis? Uh, this, this is just me just typing off a few things, but um, anybody who wants to see or determine what people perceive as the value. So, you know, what's the, is, is, was that food good? Uh, what was, is, is this, is this marketing campaign good? Is it, is it making more people come to our site uh you know uh, we 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 came out with a new strategy are people perceiving it as worthwhile that kind of stuff so uh, it, it's really important because uh you know you want to spend your money wisely uh if you're a marketing person <coughs> so um yeah 
you, you've been through most of this uh, uh, in the previous few weeks of NLP sessions, but data collection, uh, text prep, uh, you know, you're tokenized mostly by words in this case. Um, and how do you detect this stuff? So hopefully we'll see a little bit of that today. And, and, and you'll see a little bit about the presentation too, which is really neat because, uh, it's, you know, numbers are great, but, uh, when there's a huge amount of data, the numbers, you lose it. Most humans lose it. There's just too much data. So you want to visualize. So how do you present that stuff? How do you present sentiment? Like, can I have a bar chart or whatever? Yeah, that makes sense. You want the big view first. And once you see something interesting or bad or good, you'll want to drill down on it. If you, if you know, if you, leave it alone. Okay. So, um, um, big view of life and we won't get into this too much because this is like an intro session, but there's, um, all types of sentiment. Okay. Um, now your previous session was topic, um, model, and that's basically, uh, here's a document. What do you think it's about? So it's, it's coming out with I words that it thinks so it's kind of like identifying something. So it's like an unstructured, unstructured, here's some text. What do you think it's about? What do you think that article is about? What do you think that text, that chunk of text is about? And it's only as good as what you train it to. So if you're looking for biological stuff, it will find the biological stuff. And if it's not, then it it will say it's kind of useless. So it's only good as much as you train it. So document, this is the next level. Here's a document. Tell me the sentiment. Okay, so it's a, it's, a, it's an entire document. So it's kind of like there's a bunch of positives and there's a bunch of negatives. What's the net score? Almost that easy conceptually. Okay, because you know if the article is totally positive, yeah. Uh, but you can also uh, determine uh, sentiment analysis at the, at the, I'm sorry, sentiment analysis at the sentence level. So it's a bunch of words together. And um, if you want to investigate that, that's a little more advanced, but it's definitely worthwhile because this is when you determine context. So, uh, you know, if I say, uh, you know, that car is really hot. I don't mean it's temperature hot. I mean, it's good. So hot means good. Where, you know, or, you, or in a restaurant, you're saying the food was, 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 was too hot. Wait, that's a bad thing. You know, it, it scorched and, and torched your mouth. It burnt your mouth. It was too hot. You know, so hot can be good or bad. And you only determine that stuff from the context. So that usually you have to look a few words ahead or behind. And that's called n-grams usually. So if you want to look one ahead or behind, usually behind, it's one gram. If you want to look uh, like two or three words behind, it's a, a three, you, three. You look at three words behind. And, and it gets more complicated the more you look behind. So that's sentiment. I'm sorry, sentiment analysis, but done at like multiple words. Most people just call it a sentence, okay? Otherwise, you'll just have words, and we'll look at some of that stuff today, okay? So, um, the big view of life when you do sentiment, you know, if you like, if you like, if you, in a positive way, if you see something good, you give it a score. Uh, it, the most simplest one is, you know, plus one, minus one, or neutral, zero. Uh, you know, can you have words that are more powerful than other words, and they will have a weight of plus two, the more advanced some people do that, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is just a simple score. There's only three of them, uh, only three uh, sentiments, good, bad, neutral. Uh, that's what a lot of people do, make it easy. Um, now, stop words, you see, you know, this is just a review, hopefully. Stop words uh, are, are words that carry no informational content or very little. You know, ah, he, she, and they, you know, those, those, or any of like, ands or not, those words don't 
usually carry much information. So prepositions and pronouns are usually uh, filled in. There's a lot of stop words that are those kind of words. Uh, good words. Uh, well, this is if you're doing a good, bad sentiment. You might not be looking for good, bad. So remember, sentiment is not just good, bad. Okay, it can be uh, different opposites. Okay, so but but if you're doing good, good, bad, because we'll focus today on kind of good or positive way, and then the negative is bad. So good, you know, good is good, awesome, great, happy, yes, interesting. And when we get there, hopefully, I'll remember those words or. I'll copy them and you'll, and because I want to do some dynamic programming like on the fly. So you see that this stuff's actually working. That it's like, yeah, good and awesome are really close. Those two words are really related in a distance way. They're saying they're really close. Whereas if I say good, good, uh, good and bad, they're going to say they're, they're, uh, they're, the distance is big. Good is not bad. That kind of stuff. So you want to be able to have some kind of metric that, uh, measures distance. Uh, good and great. You know, I would say their their distance should be similar, real close. Okay, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, there are words that. Uh, by the way, don't say synonyms. Synonyms. That's not always true, but uh, it's mostly true. So synonyms are words that have the same meaning, but can you measure the distance of synonyms? and have them all be a, a really small distance. That would be nice. And that happens most of the time. And bad, I'm sorry, opposites are antonyms. Uh, the distance will distance between those words will be big. And it'll be a number. So you don't have to do any weird waving of hands and saying, you know, you know, it's no judgment call. It's a number, okay? So here's a simple one. Uh, my cell phone is awesome. So going with these uh, definition of good and bad, I guess, uh, I underline the word that I like, I guess, uh, the word that the parser will come in and say, hey, I see one of the words in my uh, my corpus. Uh, good. There it is. Good. Or I'm sorry. Awesome. I meant awesome. Uh, yeah. Plus one. Mm, these other words, uh, no, they, they're not in my uh, corpus. I don't know what they mean. Uh, so... Awesome is one. So my cell phone is my new cell, whatever it is. My new cell phone is awesome. It gets a plus one. So you would say, okay, it's a, it's a positive sentiment. Um, and this is what I was talking. Um, okay. The movie is not that great. Um, not. When people say not, they usually mean most people do not speak double negatives. So when they say not, it's usually a negative thing. Okay. So, uh, so uh, not that great, uh, comma, after the inter uh, interval, it was boring. So we got three words. Not is a minus one. Great is a plus one. Wait, wait. If I just said the movie is not that great, you'd be a little bit, you'd be lost. I, not you'd be lost, but it would, be, it would say not that great. Negative one for not, great plus one. It's neutral. Wait, wait. But if you and I came back and we said we heard someone say the movie is not that great, you're saying that's the bad. That's bad. It's a, it's a, it's it should be a sentiment that says bad, and that 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 is a problem if you just look at words, one word at a time, which this is do, which this is looking at. Okay, it's finding words that it uh, knows it in a corpus as good and bad. And it just sums them all up. Pluses, minuses, and, and uh, well, the neutrals are zero. So it, it thinks overall it's just a negative one. But you and I will look at this and say, no, it's really bad. It's not just a negative one. It's really bad. You, you said a bad thing, and then you follow it with another bad thing. So it's not always that great. But here we go. The other one where you do the but conjunction word in English or all, all – uh, yeah. So it says the service was terrible. Okay. That's not a good thing. But the food was great. Wait, we had a positive and we had a negative. So this, the cool way to do this is if you see these words, and I'm just going to talk about the but word. It's it's a it's like sort of a contradiction word. Uh, so <coughs> you say whenever there I can't spell. Whenever there is a but, split it split it into two. 
smaller sentences, okay? Um, so the service was terrible. Well, everyone will say that's a bad thing. Yeah, that's, that's a bad thing. Now, or you can say the food was great. Uh, so you calculate the scores separately. And that's called binary sentiment analysis. So if you ever want to read about this, you, that's kind of the thing you want to search for. Uh, but is a binary thing, you know, it's this or that, and usually contradictory. Okay. A lot of references here if you want to, if you want to look at some of this stuff. Um, um, so here is the, here's the data file I'm going to use. So if you want, oh, by the way, this is a very popular one. So it's nice looking at seminal data sets because you can find a lot of research on it. Uh, so there's a lot of seminal data sets out there. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, Google, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, um, Kegel will have, Kegel has truckloads of, uh, they have competitions, but they also are a host for a lot of data sets. So if you ever want a data set, go out to Kaggle because one thing there is you get a data set and there's lots of people talking about it or having code about on it. So you're not out there on your own with here's some data, what do I do? Or no, it, it's it's really nice. You can search it, all that kind of stuff. It's been uh, it's it's been well studied. So here we go. This is the Amazon Food Reviews. So it's just called reviews. Um, yeah. Oh, if, if you want to play with Google Colab, uh, you can read about this. They have, a, they have an interesting way to deal with data files. Uh, I'm not going to deal with that today. I'm going to do the local uh, Python, I'm sorry, local Jupyter Notebook installation here. So if you have Jupyter Notebook local, uh, this is how you would get the data into this Jupyter Notebook that's running locally on your machine. And this is not an issue because, you know, hopefully most of you have 300 megabytes free, you know, for your data, for the data set on that. If not, if, if you get, if you're downloading a big data set, that's probably not a good thing because you don't have enough memory and even the processing power is big. So you'll want to go to something in the, in the cloud, you know, Google Colab is free. So if you have a Google drive, you're in good shape programming in Google Colab. It's a Jupyter notebook on your Google Drive, which of course is in the cloud. So uh, they don't want you polluting the environment with lots of data files. So the data files are temporary uh, and this is how you deal with it. So don't worry about it for now. So um, I'm gonna run so many cells and there will be some cells I won't want to run today because it runs like four minutes. <laughs> so um, I will get to them and I made a note in, 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 in these Jupyter, the, the two Jupyter notebook files we'll be looking at that it's like this thing takes time and I will just show you the output and saying this, if, if you let it run, it'll work. So here we go. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just run every cell. Okay. So this is uh, pandas. Pandas is uh, uh, it, it's good for exploratory data analysis uh, for two-dimensional data, meaning rows and columns. Rows might be records or observations, whatever you want to call it. The columns will be features of your uh, uh, data set. So um, all we got is, is an object, a PD object, which is pandas. Well, what can pandas do? Well, the great thing that pandas can do, if, and I've seen people do nothing with pandas except read and write files because it knows about a lot of different file formats. Read CSV is, is the one that you typically will see uh, because most data sets are really neat and small, just especially when you're learning. Um, in the future, the data sets will be humongous or streaming or, or you don't have enough memory to put it there. You'll, you cannot do this. So just, just, you know, if you're going you to get advanced, especially with big data, this is not going to work. But you got to get your data somehow. So this for now, just pretend uh, this file is big, but 
not big enough. We have memory. So um, in the data directory, there's a reviews.csv file. Okay. Uh, and R stands for raw file format. So you don't have to deal with forward slash backslash, you know, depending on what operating system you're coming from. Uh, <coughs> so it's a lot nicer. Uh, just saying, you know, just deal with all that stuff that's specific to the operating system. It's going to read the CSV file. Pandas is going to read the CSV file that's called reviews.csv. It's going to stick it up. Uh, it's going to, uh, if it's a CSV, that means it's two dimensional. So it's going to uh, create pandas, that is, it's going to create a data frame. Uh, most people, if they're lazy or if there's only one data frame to deal with, they'll just name it DF. Uh, you know, if you want to name it, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, Amazon restaurant reviews, that's data, it's just a little too much. <coughs> so most people just use DF. And, if, and, and you want to do a real quick one or two things. First thing I usually do is, uh, you know, tell me your shape. You read a data frame two dimensional. How many? rows and how many columns you got and show me the first few rows. So head is, um, oh, it's running folks to start. So uh, it's reading it. This is huge. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and there, there it is. Oh, I'm sorry. There is the first five records of reviews.csv. And, and it's just nice to get a good review, uh, a, a good look at it saying, okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, there's a score. I don't know if you see this column called score. That's probably what we're going to go with for here. And um, what's its shape? Well, how many how many rows? How many columns? Kind of things. Yeah, it's it's five hundred sixty eight thousand rows. It's, a, it's records. It's a lot of reviews. Okay, great. And you can read you read the text here. Uh, I have bought several of the Vitality canned uh, whatever it is. So uh, it, it does a dot 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 ellipsis when it. Besides, it wants to shorten things. Uh, Pandas does that. Uh, it's not that that's the message. The message is the text is actually big. Okay? And we'll look at that too. Uh, real quick, just a Pandas review. If you got it, you know, show me the column names. Yeah, there they are. <coughs> there they are. Great. Um, let's do some visualization really, really quick. So this is just a bunch of imports. A lot of... Um, Oh, this is data visualization stuff. So it's Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Plotly. Uh, oh, and it, 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 it um, oh, okay, it's 19, so I don't know if I, I blinked. Yeah, it ran it. It did all the imports. Uh, and this is, uh, I'm going to look at the scores. Okay. Um, so what this says is, hey, Hey, uh, Plotly, uh, it's an advanced uh, graphing package, uh, more advanced than Matplotlib. It's saying right here. So there's a uh, real quick Plotly. There's two kind of Plotlys. Plotly is very advanced. Uh, one is you do it all on a server, uh, and you typically have to pay. But if you want to do it locally, it's called Plotly Express, and so there it is. So you run on a server, it's fast. You run it local, oh, and you, of course you're paying. You run it locally, it's Plotly Express, and of course it's not as fast. And you can't run it on huge data sets and things like that. Uh, there's no restriction, it's just, it's very powerful. So PX, so you saying, hey, uh, Plotly Express, give me a histogram. Look at this data frame and only look at the score column. It sounds good. I got it. And then you start talking to it, you know, give me some colors, give me this, give me some width, give me, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a histogram of some kind, we hope. And then you added some changes to it. So here we go. Um, oh, by the way, it's slow because it's 568,000. What was it? 568,000 uh, records, I think it said. Yeah, 568,000. Um, Oh, where's the picture? Uh, darn. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it. 
Where is it? Shoot me a histogram. Okay, well, here, here, here's time to play. So I'm, I'm opening up a cell above. And we have Matplotlib already. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to do the normal classic one. Uh, hey, Matplotlib, uh, can you give me a histogram? Well, sure. Um, and it's going to, um, it wants, okay, histogram is, um, uh, um, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's, hey, data frame, look at your score column. I only want to give it, I only want to give the histogram uh, function the one column. There it is. Oh, by the way, plot, it's weird. If you don't have a lot of memory, you get this. With a lot of available memory, you get that. So that's probably what's happening right now. But here it is. And you see, it's a little weird, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, this is how many. There's 50,000 uh, ones. Uh, I don't know, maybe 25,000, I'm, I'm guessing, twos. Fees and they're not lined up right, and you can fix that, but not today. Uh, so uh, most of the reviews are at fives, and there's like of the 368,000, roughly 350,000 are, <coughs> are, are are rating at a score of five. So that that's a good thing, the sentiment to score. Okay, so if you really ever look at some of the output of plots please look at it sometime sometimes it's very useful especially with anything that does bars or binaries or or binning so this the first binning is 52,268 right here uh well how many is in rating five there 363 363,000 okay so um uh, that's how many there are exact. And I don't want to deal with making any advanced matplotlib in this, in this session. Okay. Um, I'm sorry for this plot, plotly express, not producing any visualization right now, but it did before. So <coughs> now, um, I want to look at this part. Oh, by the way, so you if somebody gives you a score, that's nice. But there's a lot of people, <clears throat> yeah, that will say, your score is zero. And they'll text will say, everything is beautiful. Okay? That probably says you messed up somewhere. You probably didn't interpret the score properly. You know, they said zero was bad, five was good. You know, and a lot of people mess that up so let's look at the text itself this text column so it's looking at a little bit more at the na natural language level for sentiment okay so you don't want to roll any of your stuff so nltk is great natural language toolkit and you've seen it already so i'm just going to if you did if you don't have it installed uh this is how you can install it if you're within a jupyter notebook and it'll take some time. Uh, right. So I'm going to import it. Oh, so when you do a pip install, it's doing a download. Okay. Uh, it's already somewhere on my computer. So importing it is not that bad, uh, time-wise. Uh, now, uh, if you want the stop words, uh, remember, we want to analyze that text column. So the first thing is get rid of all the... Uh, the words that uh, carry no meaning. So if you're an electrical engineer, it's like information. It's called information content. So in a signal, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff in that signal that's not important. Or noise. Uh, same thing with most speech. Most of the words that when you speak are, are noise words. They don't carry impact. They don't have any informational content. So you want to get rid of them. So they're called stop words. Uh, 
so in, in NLTK, it's in, it's in a corpus. It's in, so there's a module called stop words in the NLTK package, the corpus module, and there's a stop words inside of that. So, <coughs> so, um, these are two imports. Okay. Uh, the first one is it's getting the stop words. Okay. We have an object. We have access to this, to the, the thing called stop words, but also this is not an OTK, but you know, word clouds are cool. Okay. Uh, and we want to import two things from uh, word cloud and spelling is very important. Uh, <coughs> this means as a Python file, this is an object. This is, is, is some other object and they wanted to capitalize it, meaning it's a constant. Most people, no enforcement, ca uh, all capitals usually mean uh, constant, meaning we don't want you changing this. So here we go. Um, it says, how many stop words do we have from here? Okay. Um, and, um, okay. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll update the stop words for, for two more words because we think this is uh, – so if, if you're into HTML, yeah, these are HTML uh, tags, break, and uh, hypertext reference. But you know, I just threw them in because you'll want to sometimes enhance your stop words. That, that, and usually it's specific to your industry or whatever the text you're reading. Um, so if you're doing bioinformatics, uh, you'll want to, you know, what are some bioinformatics uh, words that people say that are meaningless, like not meaningless in a bad way, but they, they, they need the words, but they don't have any information. So if you're reading HTML text, uh, say the text that I'm looking at for sentiment is HTML. I don't want any HTML tag. And there's a lot of HTML tags. So I would go find, there's, there's probably someone who has, a, you know, a whole list of HTML tags and I would say update it with this, with this, you know, with these 250 tags. So it'll be a lot faster. So if we'll run it. And so here is, oh, by the way, um, yeah. So bottom line is the last one. Uh, so the stop words that came out of word cloud is this. So you'll see there's a lot of, uh, you know, pronouns and uh, prepositions and uh, a lot of contractions, you know, like couldn't, uh, mustn't, mustn't, mustn't. Anyway, haven't, that kind of stuff. And there's a whole study on contractions too, uh, which will be advanced because you'll want to look at them because uh, – they, they carry meaning, believe it or not. So you don't want to, if you do a sentiment, you don't want to throw out uh, a lot of the, uh, the ones that include the not part. You know, you know, um, like he will. Well, that that's not a contraction I care about. That doesn't have the word not in it, that kind of stuff. So uh, advanced topic for now, uh, you know, not, is a word that we should listen to if you're doing sentiment. He will, I don't care about. Or uh, let's let us, not important for sentiment, okay? So um, uh, now if you're looking at the text, I just want to, periodically I just want to look at what I'm, what I'm looking at, the data. So uh, this is the first five uh, records, but only the text column. Okay. So th this came from here, right here. These are the first five. The rightmost column is what I just showed below. Okay. Sounds good. So, but remember, uh, we're going to analyze all the text, not just the first five records. That's kind of boring. So uh, just to review, this is saying, I want to see 
This is a uh, slicing, so you're saying I want zero to five. Python gives you zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, great. Sounds great. Uh, and and just 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 if you want to look at one, you can say df text. Oh, by the way, you have to spell the exact uh, text. I want to look at the zeroth one. Oh man, really? Uh, it should be. I have brought set. I have bought several of the Vitality can. Uh, uh, I don't know what the D stands for, but uh, is anything running up here? No, no. So it should be showing this thing fast. Hold on, kernel interrupt. Oh, there it is. I don't know what. So there is the full uh, record zeros open-ended text response. I bought several of the Vitality canned dog, dog food. Okay, this is apparently not all just... Yeah, it's a review of food, including dog food, which I didn't know about. So there it is. And now you want to look at that and say, well, is that good or bad? You know, the sentiment point of view. Okay. So... Um, Here we go. Um, and, and so here's a way to join many text strings. You say, uh, start with the blank string, keep joining all the text things, all the text. All the, this is the zeroth one. Go through all 56,000, oh, 568,000, and put them all into one big monster text string. So you're saying, you know your whole reviews thing? The whole review thing. Look at all the text. Put it all together. And what's the overall sentiment? Okay? So, you know, if you, if you go to a site that likes to complain a lot, oh, their sentiment is going to be really low, meaning bad, right? Uh, if you go to a site that's like super upbeat and they, they throw out all the bad stuff, they exist. Your sentiment, your overall sentiment for all your reviews will be insanely high. It's like, that's not always true. Not everything is good. So a lot of people will throw out bad stuff. So watch the site you get your information from if you're doing sentiment. If it's very biased, uh, you know, if, if, if you go to a site that, uh, you know, likes uh, pets uh, and you want to find sentiment on dogs, well, it's going to say dogs are, are, are amazing. They're beautiful. Everything is wonderful. Well, you know, you go to another site that's not, pet friendly they'll they'll say something maybe neutral you know they're indifferent so watch the source what you're asking for and where you're going that's real important so i'm going to join all of them together that's what this does uh all uh, 568,000 of them and this is only showing the first 500 characters okay so you'll see the first one uh, I blah, 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 most. And this is not, um, so it's concatenating each review back to back. So the second one or the first one, there's the, what I've highlighted is the zeroth record. The next one is, but I have no idea where it ends. You know, it could be, you know, so this is all of the, uh, reviews. In, in the open-ended text column. Okay, lovely. Um, uh, now this is where we gotta, uh, you should run it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna look at the stop. I'm gonna look at the um, uh, word cloud. So what what is word cloud? That's this object right here. It's a class actually. So you're gonna say, hey, stamp me out a word cloud. Okay. Okay, that this is called a constructor, so it's going to stamp you out one, and it's going to and and it's like ignore these words. So you create, you're just saying, uh, uh, "Hey, word cloud class, I want you to have, I want you to create one of yourself." And it's fine, but it, it initially takes other arguments. One is what words you want me to ignore. Okay, sounds good. So all you got is a WC. Uh, and it's a, it, it, I do a print of it right here. So it says, 
uh, that's what it is. And you import it from that file, word cloud, all lowercase. So here it is. All you have is an object. WC is an instance of a word cloud, word cloud object ready to go. Well, this is the thing we're not going to run right here. Okay. So if you ran this, it would, it would have no problem running this because stamping out an object is, is really fast. Oh, uh, insanely fast. I'm not going to run this one. And I, I did run it. I was like, I'm sitting there. I was like, what's taking so long? I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, I wonder. And I did give it. I went away and it, and it went and it did come back with a word cloud. Uh, okay, leave it alone. It did come back with a word cloud. So, if you ever want to time things, uh, this is a uh, Jupyter notebook. Uh, uh, percent is a line uh, magic. Percent percent is a cell magic. So, if you say percent percent, that says, "Hey, Jupyter notebook, I want you to do something special." Yeah, I want you to time this thing. Everything in this cell, I want you to time. Well, is it one line or four lines or five lines? It doesn't matter. It's it's percent percent says here comes the whole cell. I want to time it. So this this <coughs> uh, yeah, this is this oh and and it took three minutes. The whole thing took three minutes, six seconds. To me, that's like infinity. So I don't want to run this again unless you want to run it on your own. It will tie your machine up for three, well, my machine for three minutes here. Um, but if, if you um, you get this word cloud, okay, WC is just an empty object. It's an empty word cloud object. Then you decided to feed it some text. You say, hey, word cloud, I want WC. I want you to generate, what you know, generate some method inside word cloud that can do things and, and you know if you're generating something you got to probably feed it something yeah here's the text what's the text you say now if you do this on a okay so text is huge it's huge remember it's 567 thousand this is only one of them so it's 567 thousand times that many size-wise, roughly, that much. So it's a lot. It's a decent amount of text. So if you're doing word clouds when you're playing, especially, you know, do, do it on something small, I guess. But in real life, that's not the case. But also in real life, you got to be careful about asking for word clouds for humongous things, okay? Unless you're willing to wait, okay? So I got a, I got a word cloud, which is a populated word cloud i know it sounds bad you want to like visualize it and so here it is you say matplotlib oh by the way it's an image so you say image 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 uh show i am show and uh, no comment there so you, you take that populated word cloud and you feed it into image show and it'll 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 uh it'll show you this and by the way um yeah, if I run this, work this won't be defined. So I'm not going to run this thing. But the important part, also, more other things is, um, it has axes, x's and y's with numbers. So you'll want to turn it off because it makes no sense for this. So if if you're you know you'll run it, you'll say, oh, what what are these axes? It makes no sense. For word clouds, the axes make no sense at all. Uh, if you're actually displaying a real picture and it's, you know, 400 by a thousand, yeah, you'll see numbers like zero to 400 and, and zero to 1000. And that'll make sense. It's the pixels, but that makes no sense here. Okay. So, and you can also save a figure. Uh, so if you'd like to save it and ship it off or email to your friend, you know, stop doing here and stop doing screen captures, just save it as an image. Okay. And, and it's any image format. It doesn't have to be anything. <coughs> Lovely. Great. Now, um, let's look at the sentiment real quick again. Um, numeric scores. The score column. 
It's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, wait, one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five, right. No zeros, okay? I, I may have misspoken before. So if you ever look at, and that's categorical. You know, there is no 3.7, there is no 97.2, you know, there is no negative. But, you know, it's, it's not a continuous number set. It is it is numbers. It's, it is numeric, but it's categorical. You can only have one, two, three, four, five. So watch it when people say, you, you know, uh, categorical is not numeric. It's not necessarily true. In case, case it's right here. The score is only five categories. One, two, three, four, five. And, um, and we, saw this, we, saw, we saw the graph uh, – well, with the map plot lib on uh, there it is. So it, it's, it's primary. It's uh, prevalent uh, rating of five. Okay, sounds good. And, you know, if you're in a restaurant business, you, that's better be true. You, you better get a lot of good reviews o- over the bads or the not so good. Okay, uh, so if you want to find those things, you can do a value counts and value counts. It, it, you should only apply that. Oh. It'll yell you. It, it should only be applied to uh, uh, a column or a feature that has, you know, that can be categorized. Well, five categories, that's not bad. If you have 750 categories, value counts is, is not going to help you. Okay, it's going to be a better way. You'll want to bend it first, like make them less categories. And then... 750 categories is a little too much. So people will do that, like if you want to, if you want to do your age, you know, zero to hundred, uh, your age, uh, this is going with zero to hundred. That's a hundred categories. It's a little bit too much for most people. So they'll bin it zero to 10, 10 to uh, 20, 20. If you want to do every decade, now you only have 10 categories. Okay. That's good. So this is an easy one. You have, fa- you have five uh, categories, uh, see so the frequencies or the counts of each of the values, hence the word value counts. Uh, so I can run this cell, okay? And how are you going to break this down? Well, I'm going to say four and fives are good. Oh, I only want uh, three sentiments or two, depending on, well, three. Uh, this is good. Um, uh, oh, they're not in these. Okay, by the way, when you do value counts, the most Frequent will the, the highest counts will be at the top. So uh, here we go. One and two, a rating of one and two are a bad according to me, and a rating of three, we're we're, we're just going to ignore. Okay, that's neutral. Oh, meaning it's not a good sentiment and it's not a bad sentiment. It's not like we're ignoring it. We're just saying, okay, you're neutral. Okay, we don't want to hear from you. We want to hear from the bad. And we want to hear from the good. That's kind of uh, the big view of life. So um, um, look, look at the DF score column. Oh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to look at the. Uh, I'm going to look at the data frame and get a data frame that includes everything but the three ratings. Okay, so there's many ways to do this. Uh, it's usually advisable to, if you, if you're working with pandas, to do it in steps. So don't do everything in one step because it'll be hard to follow if you pick it up tomorrow. You know, the day later, it's like you won't even know what you did. So I'm going to get rid of all uh, scores. Uh, okay, I asked it the negative way. So it's going if, if it's going to create a filter. I want everything that's not a three. Okay, everything that's not a three. Good. And 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 you'll learn about this. If you, if you get into, into uh, data science. Uh, but when you do sentiment analysis, you'll have to know this too. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a filter. And what it is, is it's uh, a Boolean array. So uh, what this says is uh, record zero was not a three. Uh, record four was not a three. Okay. And there are some false ones in here. Okay. So, uh, here we go. That's a filter. And if you look at it, I can just, just for a sanity, uh, a sanity uh, uh, check, what's the sum of this? And you, I do this often, you know, you're saying, is this, is, am I, is it, does it make sense? Yeah. There's a, there's that many records. There's that many trues and falses. 
Okay. Um, now, <coughs> and um, anybody, can anyone, say, okay, I, I want to look at the length of the data frame. That's how many records we got, 500. Um, why are they not the same? Anybody have an idea? Why? Why is is the number of records the same? Not the same as my not threes. I'll 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 scroll. All the numbers are there in front of you. Look at this number. Here's the number threes. Oh yeah, there it is. That's the same number as this. So your filter is good. In other words, you're, you're successfully, when you do a sum, and this will happen often, true is a one. False is a zero. So it's only adding up the true the truths, even though there's 568,454 of them. So what I'm saying here is um, it, it, it's expected. So this is just a sanity check. And you, once you do this, how come these aren't the same? It's like, no, that's what you said. You're saying, I'm ready to remove the threes. Okay. So here we, uh, here we go. Um, so I'm, I'm not ingenious, especially when I'm uh, playing. Uh, if I'm writing a book, I'd probably give it a better name. <laughs> but here we go. This is, you're saying, this is a filter. Bunch of trues and falses. You're saying, apply that to the data frame. That's pulling out not threes. That's pulling out scores that are not threes. Okay. That's one, two, four, and five. So I'm getting ready. I'm getting closer to the bad sentiment and the good sentiment by ignoring the middle one. So that's what I'm doing. I'm saying, hey, there's a data frame, and this includes everything but the not threes. It's the not three data frame. Okay. So this will be a little bit smaller, not much. And, um, oh, it's thinking right here. It's thinking right there. Oh, remember, it's 560. Well, now it's less. 560, 520,000 roughly. Oh, yeah, that number, 525,000. So there it is. And if you look at the, the scores, not that this is proof, because we only looked at what, what, when you print things out in Pandas, it'll show you if it's insanely big. Uh, it'll list the first uh, few records and the last few records. So if you look at these, I'm looking at the score column. No threes, but we got a bad sample. We're only looking at the first five and last five, but uh, you kind of have an idea that eh, it's probably working. I uh, used to see threes, now I don't. And it is 525,000. So this data frame not three got rid of all the scores of three. Got it. So, um, okay. Now, uh, here comes the advanced one. I want to create another column. And this happens often. I want to create a column here or anywhere. Remember, the order of the columns don't matter. If you want to, it's work. Uh, so I'm going to create another column and I'm going to call it sentiment. Yeah, okay, please, it has some unique names. Oh, the spellings can be the same, but don't do that or mess with people's heads. Don't name a column score with a different spelling. So call it sentiment, because that's where we're going. We're getting sentiment from the score. We're, we ignored the threes, the neutrals. Now we're going to sit there and try to make it better. And we're going to say, if it's a five, it's a good sentiment. If it's a one, bad sentiment. If it's a four, good sentiment. If it's a two, bad sentiment. So we're going to look at these twos. Ones and twos, we're going to throw to bad sentiment. Fours and fives of scores, we're going to throw to the good sentiment. So what does this mean? Uh, uh, 
we have to apply some kind of logic. Okay. And instead of writing this stuff for, with native Python code, which is brutal, please don't do this. If you ever find yourself writing loops and it's just turning out where you keep asking yourself, there's gotta be a better way. Yes, there is. Okay. So apply is a very powerful, more powerful, uh, method that pandas gives you and you're saying hey you know what you know the data frame well the data frame that is just above look at the score column okay okay i got i got 525,814 of them got it well apply this function by the way it's called the lambda expression but some people call it a lambda function don't worry about it so you're saying it's an inline uh, functionality. So instead of me writing a function and I know that, and you put it right in line because its only purpose is right here. So what you're going to do, you're going to say, you know what? Um, I'm going to produce a rating. That's my word. I could call it anything I wanted. Uh, I'm going to produce a rating. Uh, and if you're going to get a rating of a one, Okay, this this thing, this thing is raining. Okay, if that thing, if that thing is bigger than three, well, it can't be three. Okay, so if it's bigger than three, what's that mean? It's a four or five. And you can write it all different ways, and but the simplest thing is if it's bigger than three. Okay, it's four or five. You're going to get a rating of a one. So a one is going to get like for this for this last one, it has a five. Inside that new column sentiment is going to get a, a one. Well, what about this um, this two here? Well, it, rating is greater than a three. No, it's not. It's a two. Okay, you're going to get a negative one rating. So the sentiment for this column, you're going to have a column out there. It's going to be called sentiment. It's going to have a sentiment of negative one. So you only have two kinds of sentiments: positive one or negative one. It's where you want to be. You don't want to have a whole scale, okay? So this is a way to map uh, map that. So here you go. Uh, so here you go. Produce another column. Um, wait, wait. Um, wait, wait. I'll run it again. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Produce this one again, one more time. This one right here. I'm doing this one, one. So I, I made a DF not three. I just made one here. And well, I refreshed it. And then what I'm doing, I'm going to run this. Oh man, wait. A value is trying to be set a copy of a slice of a data frame. Just using loc value instead indexer. Rating. Mm. Darn. The if not three sentiment. Oh, I hate coding live in front of people. Sentiment. And this is going to be now. Okay. Why does that not work? Um, wait, wait. I'm going to give it like a half a minute. Because it didn't work like yesterday. Apply lambda rating one, us rating greater three is a negative one. That's right. And this is this is a this is a bad thing. It's it's an error. It it's not a warning. So uh, see the caveats. Lovely. I need caveats. Caveat is getting me. Um, trying to send a copy of the slice from a data frame. Data frame, not sentiment. That's sentiment. When I look at the score, I'm going to apply a, a, a nameless anonymous function. That looks good. So I'm going to, uh, I'll address this later and uh, I'll, I'll amend the code with some comments like around here, but we'll talk because I have the output cells and here it is. So record zero had a sentiment of one. <coughs> okay. Record zero has a sentiment of one. Yeah, there it is. It's a five, so it gets a one. 
Uh, record one, it was a negative. Okay, record one. Let's look at record one. Remember, it's 0, 1, right? One. Here's record one, the blue one. Yeah, it has a score of one. Yep, that means it's a negative rating. It's, you know, from, from one to five, a one is bad. That's right. So this worked. Uh, uh, yesterday it did. So these are the sentiments, okay? You only have two kinds of sentiments, good and bad, so that's great. Uh, and if you look at the scores, oh, that's this is an easier way. So you said five got mapped to an, this five got mapped to a negative one. Oh, five got mapped to a positive one. I'm sorry. A one rating is bad. It got mapped to a negative one. A four is a good rating. It got mapped to a positive one. Great. And here's all the scores, okay? And if you look at the value counts overall, there they are. Uh, remember, you took something that had five categories and now you brought it down to only two. Good and bad. So that's good. Overall, you'll be doing this often. And uh, and <clears throat> unfortunately, you'll have to count on me because I don't have I can't run these cells because I don't have that sentiment column. And you, you just say, look, hey, hey, look at the uh, look at the sentiment column. Find out, filter on ones, pull them out. I only want a positive data frame. Oh, by the way, it's going to come out with only positive records. So positive is a data frame. It's only the positive ones. Pretty good. Only the positive ones. And by the way, you know that there's uh, that many positive ones, records. And then you produce another data frame called negative. I guess I could have called it negative data frame. That's all the, what you consider to be you know, negative or not so good reading. So um, you produce another data frame and that's usually what you end up doing too. <coughs> okay, you wanna analyze positives and negatives differently. Uh, it's a good advice. Uh, if you wanna keep more in one place, you can, but it's, why not split them up if, if, if you can. Uh, remember, new tools have been thrown out. And here's a summary. Okay. You can always, oh, this is the summary of, oh, um, summary column. Where is it at? Summary, this thing, summary column right here. That, that, that feature, that column. You're saying, hey, you know, you know that, you know that positive data frame that we produced, that 443,000. A uh, record with only positive reviews. Uh, let me look at the summary column. Look at all this stuff. Now we never looked at summary, but well, you know, it's something, some, something more advanced, and it's like all good stuff. Well, good quality dog food, delight. Okay, sounds good. Great, nice, uh, uh, perfect. Uh, will not do without. That sounds like a good thing. Uh, it just sounds, it's real hard to analyze that one, but that's a good thing. You know, it's like, it's a necessity here, and you know, one of those. Uh, great honey. Okay. Uh, you know, so, um, but if you look at, um, uh, but you can also look at the negative one if you want, you and you'll see a lot of, mm, you know, not positive words. Okay. Yeah, you know, I hate to say that, but uh, here we go. Um, um, word cloud two. Uh, so this is only looking at the pause. I'm producing a word cloud of only the positives. So you're saying, hey, you know what? Only look at the positive ones. Look at the summary. Wait, what summary? Uh, these words. So if you step back, it's like there's three columns in this data set that have something to do with sentiment. So we're finally getting the summary. Not that, you know, it depends where you want to start. Uh, hopefully it all consistent. I guess I could analyze that too. You know, or, you know, is the score consistent with the text column, consistent with the summary column? That would have been a neat one. That's a little advanced, but I'm going to do that in the future. But, um, you know, and throw out ones that are inconsistent. Because... 
it doesn't make sense. So contradictory, you know, you're in one record and they're saying you got a high score, but I gave, I said, everything is pathetic. It's all bad. The flavor is bad. Everything's bad. The value is bad. It's like, wait, that's not right. You got to throw that record out because it's, it's inconsistent. And that's a nice thing you want to do too. Sometimes, um, sentiment or, or whatever. So here's the positive sentiment. Uh, right here, I'm going to run it because it's a, it, it's actually when you actually generate a word cloud, it's nine. Oh, only nine seconds. Uh, yeah, that, that's not so bad. But uh, I don't have the summary. Uh, I do have the summary column, so I can run this. Uh, positive. I don't have positive. That's right. I can't do that. Sorry, but. Uh, yeah, so uh, stamp out a word cloud object, um, generate another, it's fill it with some text, and here it is. So these are all good words. Yeah, tasty, perfect stuff. A lot of people said the word stuff. Anyway, uh, best, love, sure. These are all nice, yummy. Uh, some of these words are so small. Remember, size indicates the frequency and negative sentiment. Um, Wait, what happened here? Um, yeah, I'll have to fix that. So, uh, oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm sorry. I should explain this one. When you're, uh, it's not so bad as web, web scraping, but Sometimes you'll run something and I'll say, I did this with a word positive one and it worked fine. But then I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to just copy everything and change the word negative and, you know, see what it does. And it says, uh, no, I can't have that. Wait. Inside the negative, inside the summary, someone has a float number. Okay. So you can do two ways. You, you, and, and especially if your data set is huge. I don't feel like looking for it. I don't care. But if it's one of those, I'm ignoring that record. Now you say, well, you know, if you, if you have uh, 20,000 records and you're ignoring only two, it's like, who cares? Okay. So if you have a small data set, it's really important. If you have ignoring records, I meant, if you have a large data set, you could ignore things left and right. No problem. You don't, you don't lose a lot. So this has a problem and there's there, it, it tried to, uh, Join. Join is a string thing, and it says, nope, there's a float somewhere. So what you said is, it's like what I'm doing here, I added this thing. You're saying, I'm going to do the same thing, but only if the review is a string. It, it, it When I first did this, it's like, why doesn't this work? And it's like, yeah, there was a float somewhere. So you'll, you'll sometimes have to enhance your code. Uh, so uh, we, we move on. Um, Okay, only pay attention to strings. Only pay attention to strings because this is a string thing. You're joining a bunch of strings. So it better be a string. So you're ignoring non-strings, okay? And, yeah, and, and it produced a word cloud. And um, uh, well, there are a lot of, there's a few bad words in here, but, oh, I guess they could have said bad coffee. So coffee, I thought, showed up in the one above, too. Uh, but disappointed is bad. Uh, bad is bad. Uh, yuck. Sideways yuck. Yeah, that's that's an easy, uh, you know, that's a, yeah. So that's kind of neat. Uh, but um, I just want to, can I, uh, so uh, I'm going to quickly just, you can move through this really, really quick, but the um, if, if you look at the sentiment, the summary column, which is the this column, that was one of the original columns, and the sentiment one is the one I produced, but in this case, um, uh, hold on. <coughs> um, you know, I only showed... Oh, by the way, it's only shown the first five. If you don't like ones and zeros, you can also use the words positive and negatives, uh, if you like. Uh, it, it all depends on what you like, okay? So, but don't try to do math on it just because it's ones and zeros. Uh, 
So, it, you know, negative and positive, it'll work too. Okay. So that is really a, a quick one. I'm going to close this up. Is there any questions on, on this? I know I rushed through and I'm really sorry. I couldn't get that one cell to work. I'll work on it and I'll update the Google drive with the correct information. So it actually works. There's no questions. I'm going to move on to something else. So, um, like I said, that was the, that was kind of the hard one because it's, um, it was, it was a large data set. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I also want to point you to is there's two files I gave you. Uh, it's part of the, the Python for data science course we give. It's this distance, oh, distance by, okay, E11, distance by coordinates versus E11A, distance by text. I'm just going to go over them really, really quick. I'm going to show you them and you should look at them. If Because distance is a real important thing, uh, regardless if it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, any kind of text processing, because they'll always do distance. And it's like, because you want to compare how close something is to something else. And it's multidimensional. So don't think, you know, calculating the distance on a number line is brain dead. How about two dimensions? Oh, we have a lot of ways to do that. How about three dimensions? A lot of ways to do that. So one dimension is really simple. With, 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 um, uh, with numbers, but what if you don't have numbers? You have text. Is the word car, car like an automobile, a car? Is that close to dog? It's like most people say, no, I think so, right? <laughs> but you, you would you would say other things like is is uh, happy the word happy? Is that close to the word cheerful? You better say yes. Cheerful usually means happy. Okay. Uh, so how does that happen? So here we go. In coordinates, I'm just going to show you. It. This is the numeric one. Um, maybe multi-dimensional. So it's not just about text. It's not just about um, you know one-dimensional stuff. So here we go. Wait, I'm going to open up the other one too. Um, distance by text. So we're going to show. Um, real quick, just go over it. I'm not going to uh, run it or anything. And um, if you have numeric data, you know, a data point here and a data point there, how do you say they're close or not close? That's here. That's the one we're looking at here, the, the, uh, the coordinates. I call it coordinates. I guess you could have said numeric or something. And coordinates indicate also that it's not just one dimension. Three, two, three, four. So if you do Euclidean distance, okay, uh, distance, point A, point B, what method do you want to use? Oh, right here. What met? Okay, what? Okay, so here we go. Uh, you can read this. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't go worry about the math. Don't get hung up on it. But a point A, you could say, I have a point at five. Point B, I have a point at seven. Well, most people would say the distance between them is two. It's easy. It, there is no in, interpretation between them. You can pause negatives, numbers, it don't matter. But what if it's two dimensional? Point A is at zero, zero. Point B is at three, four. So if I pick those numbers out and you geometry guys, yeah, that's the three, the three, three four, five triangle. The, the distance be, be between zero and zero and three, four is five. Sometimes. Only if it's Euclidean. What if you don't do that? The distances can change. So that'll become a more advanced topic uh, when you get into data science. And it's not just... Uh, two dimensions because three, four, five. The big view is um, you can do different uh, methods. Uh, Euclidean is a straight line. So if you have two points, just draw a straight line between them. 
somehow figure out that distance. Okay, and if it's too, and and it's the Pythagorean. Okay. Uh, what if you're traveling in a city, and these two, these coordinates represent you know zero zero and three four? I mean, I can't go on a diagonal. There's buildings in my place. I have to walk the grid. So that's called Manhattan, or all these other names. <laughs> Most people call it Manhattan because it's it's a grid. Okay. Uh, that's the names. And, you know, I recently heard the word snake. It's like, yeah, you can't, you know, you're not, you can't fly. Okay. And there's all these other techniques. Okay. Uh, just, just a heads up. Okay. And there's even more I got to research. Uh, and there's pluses and minuses and merits for and against all of them. Uh, don't worry about the formulas. Uh, the code is nice. You know, uh, it's very advanced in the sense of, uh, error checking and all that stuff. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, most people will not write the code from scratch. They'll just call some other package like SciPy. And yes, you can see a lot of stuff in here. It's similar, but don't worry about it, okay? Here comes the one that we're going to probably, because uh, uh, you'll hear these words, okay? How do you compare distances of text? Hmm. <laughs> okay, sorry for Much interrupting different. you. Uh, Ed, sorry for interrupting you. <clears throat> Excuse me, we are almost um, on time. If you want to wrap up, that would be great. And now this is a long, um, it's a, uh, right. probably a three or five hours maybe um, a lecture, but we have to right. uh, go by the code. So if you want to wrap up within the next 10 minutes, that would be great. 10 minutes, I'll wrap up. So this this is just different ways to calculate um, distance of words. Like I keep picking happy and cheerful. You better come out with a real low number. <laughs> you know what you when uh, when I say happy and mad, you better come up with a big number. You know they're opposites, that kind of stuff. And there's many ways you can do this. Uh, take a look at this, but the big one is cosine, S cosine uh, similarity, and it's also called uh, the opposite of that is called cosine distance. Okay, so distance is the opposite of similarity. So one is one minus the other. Don't worry about it. If you see anything at cosine similarity to cosine distance, it's the same. It's about text, how close or how far away uh, words are from each other. In, in, in sense of uh, meaning, I guess, or that kind of stuff. So here you go, NLP, and I'll just show you the last one. Uh, it's uh, the glove. Uh, NLP, uh, this one. Now, it's going to use a lot of libraries, uh, and 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 uh, it's a little advanced topic because it it it, it, it it's it's uh, it, it produces uh, a word produces a vector. So this is called vector analysis. If you ever hear that, vectors are used all over the place. But uh, advanced math. Here we go. So here it is. Oh, by the way, uh, Torch is a Python library. Uh, 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 and this is <coughs> torch text, so it's even more specific. It's just for text, okay? So if, if you you will almost always have to run this, so you install it. I'm gonna just run through it really quick. Each uh, none of these none of this stuff takes long. Uh, not like producing that word cloud. So uh, here's a bunch of stuff you have to Im import if you want to do glove stuff with torch. Glove does not need torch, but it's nice. Torch makes it easy to use these glove vectors. So if I say, give me a vector for the car, word car, it comes back to these numbers. And it's like, what do these numbers mean? Well, you compare the, the vector for car, these numbers ag against another vector for another word. And so we'll just go there. So if you say, give me a, uh, hey, glove, give me a vector, give me, give me the, the glove vector, I want 50 deep, give me 50 numbers, that'll be 50 vector <coughs> for the word car. <coughs> and then you say, how about, give me the word for, uh, you know, dog. Oh, but, and you, you'll, you'll keep the same dimension. You say, give me a 50 deep vector. The more deeper you go, the more time it takes, but the better the results are. So you don't want a vector that's one deep, okay? So 
we're going to do one with 50 really quick. Uh, and and what you do is you calculate the distance one on one. So there's 50 of them. So what happens behind the scenes is it looks at the zeroth the zeroth element. It calculates the distance. It holds that. Then the next one, the first element of each of the vectors, and they're just numbers, and it, and you calculate the distance. You know, save that. Second part, look at the second element of the car vector. It's just a number. Oh, floating point number. Give me the uh, second element of the dog glove vector. It's just a number. It's floating point number. Calculate the distance. And it looks at all those distances, and it calculates like an average distance. And that's how it knows the words are similar or not. So let's just do it really quick. Uh, there's many glove vectors you can get. Well, when you say glove vector, I think that's redundant. It, you, you, everyone says glove vector, but it's redundant. <laughs> anyway, so it, there's a thing called 6B. I don't know these naming conventions. I, I'm, I'm just going to use the 6B version. It's 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 a pretty sh quick one. Uh, it's not like insanely elaborate. So um, look them up when you need them. We're just going to use 6B, okay? Um, and um, there's... Uh, the, vector, the dimensions you specify. Okay, we're going to go with 50. Okay? Okay, here we go. So, uh, how, how do you use glove vectors? Well, you can use them without torch, but torch, torch text specifically makes it really easy. You say, torch text, uh, look, uh, I, I, want, I, I, want, I want you to generate glove vectors based on that 6B uh, uh, version uh, I want 50 dimensions, dimensional vector, and I want um, uh, a limit of 20,000. Oh, by the way, that's that's um, newer Python. So it's 20,000 uh, max vectors. Lovely, great. Okay, I'm not going to run these, okay? Because I ran them already. Here's a type. Yeah, it's a glove object. From up, that's under torch text, okay? If you ever want to have ask for help on it, just read it, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, here it is. I got a glove. I called it lowercase glove. And everyone does that. Glove is glove. So this is the variable glove, lowercase glove. So you can talk to that object saying, give me, remember, it's 50 dimensions. So you can say, hey, glove, look up this word. Hey, glove, my, you know, this glove. <laughs> look up this word. And it'll give you 50 numbers. It's like, what does this mean? This is the glove vector for car in a 50 dimensional way based on how torch text does it. So you want to compare some of those things. Okay, lovely. Great. So, uh, uh, okay, here it goes. Um, oh, and, 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 and by the way, this is, this, is, this is the same as above. This means you're printing it out differently, okay? But we're going to you, you, you do Euclidean distance. So here we go. Oh, how is car related to bike? Well, I got 50 numbers in car. I got 50 numbers in bike. Now, remember, you say car and bike. Uh, okay, they're, they're transportation methods, but other than that, I don't know how to relate it. Anyway, but let's just go with it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so what it does is it, it does the distance between 0.4769, whatever distance it is. Okay? Now, remember, we calculate, you know, you got two... You, Different distances. I just just remember that there's multiple ways to do distance, and that it calculates the distance between 0.4769 and that other one down there. Then the distance between this one and that one, all 50 of them, you know. And so we got 50 different distances, and it kind of averages it. Okay, so blah blah blah. Here's some ways to do it. Uh, so real quick, um, if I look at the if I wanted to compare car with car. So anytime you do anything, you want to test something at the sanity check. How is car related to car? <coughs> I better come back with a zero, basically. And it's like, don't know they're the exact same thing. The car and car are the same. So here, here's how we do it. And uh, uh, W, this is the word W and this is the word O. Don't worry about it. It, the vector is each. Okay, so you do the whole thing and the distance is zero. 
Oh, by the way, the positive, they're, they're positive numbers, okay? So zero is, they're the exact same word. 0 0.00003, they're the exact same word, almost. Okay, you get a number like 10, they're pretty far apart, okay? So let's just try some. Glove, car, and bike. Four. Not the same word. Not even close, okay? So, so uh, you say, well, why do we have to write all this code? Yes, it's nice to understand that once, but you don't ever want to do it again. So can we can we can we use torch to do it? Yeah. By the way, distances are, are a thing called norm. So if you're into linear algebra, if you do the norm, that's the di that's that's the distance between these. So if you're looking at the distance between car and car, uh, you want to find a distance, you do the norm. N O R N. It's called norm. Okay. It, it's a distance. Okay. So I want to find car to car, car to bike, car to girl, car to computer, car to car with different spelling. It's case sensitive. That's another thing you want to compare from really first. Force everything lowercase, what a lot of people do when they do text processing. Because then, okay, so you'll see. This Euclidean distance, um, um, because I didn't specify by default it does Euclidean distance. So Car to car is zero. Car to bike is this. Car to girl. Car and a girl. They're not related. Car, computer, no. Uh, so none of these are related to each other. I guess I could have typed in cars, but I'm not going to write it. Car and does it does it really compare singular and plural? Well, if you add an S to it, yeah, but person and people, that's singular and plural, but that's hard to do. You know, every language has those things. You know, it's not just adding an S. But here's cosine similarity. The big thing is uh, one is one minus the other. Okay. So the big thing is you want to look at cosine distance. Okay. So uh, look. Uh, so every everything is just as, uh, as above, but they're bad. Except car to car. Okay. But, you know, it's a little bit different. I mean, the numbers are a little different. But car to ant, no. Oh, by the way, this is um, zero to one. Cosine thing is zero to one, just like trig. Well, it, there's no negatives. So, yeah. Anyway, so uh, cosine is zero to one. One is absolute not related. And it's kind of funny, car and car are not, because of the case sensitivity. But um, you, you can check this out, and, you know, this is a – uh, candy with a bunch of other words, okay? Uh, candy, I'm comparing candy with candy. So distance is zero, that's right. Distance is zero, that's right. You know, uh, but, you know, chocolate. Cosine does pretty good. Candy and chocolate are close, but not, not Euclidean. It says they're not even related. So it's a more important, you want to choose the appropriate distance. And when you do it with text, it's mostly cosine. Okay, but almost everyone does cosine, and you know, there's just one, but you can look at a lot of words. And but here's one happy, and here's all the all the words that I thought are happy. I don't know about beneficial, but joyful, jovial, glee, bliss, cheer, cheerful. And here's a cheer, cheer, cheerful thing. I put in cheer, and it's like, how come it? Oh, cheerful is happy, cheer is not. Anyway, so here we go. So remember, we're comparing happy with each one at a time. This is just a little loop. And um, if you look at uh, cheer, it says, this says, uh, no, no, happy and cheer are not close enough. Oh, look, cheerful is, remember, you want to use cosine when you use text. That's what these columns would produce. Don't use Euclidean when you do text. Uh, but happy and cheerful is zero. Happy and jovial, jovial is zero. Happy and glee is zero. Bliss. Now, bliss is like happiness on steroids. Okay? So they're close, but not that close. Okay? So if you're blissful, that's like beyond happiness. You're in, you know, you're, you're in another dimension. So here's sentiment analysis. Uh, you can look at it. I was me just playing with it. But if there's any questions right now, um, there are sentiment data sets out there. Uh, so it's, it's an advanced thing, and you want to download it and play with it. 
there's a lot of code out there for it and um yeah you never stop learning with this stuff so uh, i hope i didn't take too much time um mo you want to are you there hi ed yeah i'm here hi ed sorry i was mute i was in mute so i'm here thank sure. you so much for uh, this great presentation uh, that's it for for today's guys you know if you have any question any concern any doubt you know how to get to get to communicate with us so we are going to leave you now and see you guys next week on a different topic probably next week is going to be our last week hopefully we are going to extend the program two or three more weeks but we are going to see uh, let's see what we can do but uh, that's it for today i'll see you guys um, on next week and until then you guys have a great evening great rest of the weekend uh, talk to you later